James, what's on your fallback list? Racist in Idaho. I mean, when you saw what happened, women's basketball team was been playing in Spokane, and it was staying in a place across the Idaho border, and people were going by in pickup trucks yelling racial epithets mm. at them. And that's the kind of stuff that just, when every time that we think maybe we're inching toward a post-racial world, these jerks pull you back into the world you actually live in. I, I, you know, all right, I was the favorite of Megyn Kelly and Jesse Waters of what we talked about on your show about preachy yeah. female. I would rather spend the next thousand years in a humanities lounge in Berkeley than spend <laughs> one minute with those people in Idaho. I can promise you that right now. Yeah, that's a real comparison for you, especially. And it's sad when you see, you know, we talk about politics is so divisive, but it's also quite sad when you see... Uh, sports or culture, places oh. that we could come together, and then those people, the, the racists and the hate mongers, use it to take over. And, and those women, they were good. We, we beat them last year to go to the Final Four. They lost the game. They, they had to move them out of the hotel. They had to take them to Spokane. And, and another interesting thing happened. The Gonzaga men's basketball team was playing in Detroit, and they started, they were in a bus and some Republican jerk said that there were migrants <laughs> coming in here. Yeah. There were basketball players at a Jesuit university. Yeah. I mean, that, that's how much... Some, sometimes the racism in this country just slaps you right in the face and say, we're here, dude. And, okay, yeah, we're it's here. A, it's a wake-up call for those who are in denial about it, if, if they're listening. That's, right. that's a good one. What's right. on your list? Well, speaking of slapping in the face, I mean, the misogyny present here in New York, Ari, this last week on TikTok, there's been a trend of showing videos of women who have been injured, walking down the street, minding their own business, sometimes looking at their phone when they are literally socked in the face by someone they've never known or never met. Mm. The misogyny of this world sometimes slaps me in the face, mm -hmm. and it has been slapping women across the city in the face, literally and metaphorically. And sometimes I'm stunned by the sexism in the world that we still encounter and the way in which it interacts with the racism as in Idaho. Every time that you think we, this is behind us, you find out it's definitely not behind us. But what is good is people expose this kind of thing. Michelle Obama said, when they go low, we go high. I'll tell you this about fallback. When they go heavy, I go light. <laughs> okay? So this is important. Um, but my fallback for this week is very light, but I see it all the time. I see it more often. Using a phone in a public pay place, subway, subway stop, I see it in New York, on a train, to play your volume. Oh, yeah. This, I'm calling, I'm using this platform to call for this to fall back. I understand if you forgot your headphones. I understand if you're busy. But unless it is an emergency, like audio from the doctor or your kids yeah. or something. I've seen people pull up. The other day I saw someone listening to a newscast. I'm glad people want to listen to news. Playing at high volume in the subway, Lisa. You've been on a New York subway. I have. Okay. There's 40 All people the packed together and one person's doing this. <laughs> and I had two thoughts. One, I, I, I need this to fall back. And two, I thought, is anyone going to say anything? And nobody did. So we all are living with the tyranny of the loud phone. That's my fallback. The you iPhone guys can weigh box, in. That's yeah. your tyranny. I, I, okay. I, I will weigh in because I, I, I think that they're everywhere in the country, okay, for some reason they're probably a greater percentage in Manhattan, but I don't know that, of people who think they're the only people in the world. They, they just <laughs> carry on a conversation, doesn't matter who's around them. They walk in the middle of the street, all right? They just, they're just so yeah. self-absorbed. No, that's not a majority. It's a, <laughs> but but they, a lot of people you encounter around the country, where there's some, and you see them on airplanes a lot, and they, they got these little ear things, and they're trading stocks on the phone or something. Like, man, shut up. Yeah, we all have to hear it. Yeah, yeah I'm not, no one, you're Lisa, not the only person. will you join you. us in this fallback? I will. I will also acknowledge to James that there's a lot of main character energy in this city in which we live. <laughs> I am guilty of it sometimes, too. I'm not going to say that I'm not. But yes, please, lower your phones when you're on the subway. Right? Yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Any yeah. other big differences before I let you go, James, between New York and the rest of the world? Every time I come to New York City, it makes me proud to be an American. Hey. I, I, I cannot, I was 33 before. First time I ever came here, and I was on Central Park South. It was December, and it was, you know, it was like 30 degrees. 
in which, man, if people move around here, I like this, okay? I'm, and and I, I'm just flying in here, and you, you come in and you see the postcard, and you go, damn, man, I like that place. I love that. And, and I, yeah, I do, and I bet I love New Orleans, and I love all of the other places in the world, but I've, I've never understood why to be a real American you had to dislike New York. I think New York is the great American accomplishment. Mm. I really do, and I, I don't mean I'm done pandering. I, I actually mean that. And you I love see that the, And us. you come in, and you, you see it, and, you know, you see... Lower Manhattan, and you see Midtown, you see the park, you see Northern Manhattan, you see the whole thing, and you just, uh, my heart, you know, you, my, my heart rate goes up mm. a little bit. I'm, I'm not honest with I you. I love that. I did. Lisa, final word. How can you top that? The man has endorsed the city in which you and I both live and chose to live. I'm not from here originally. I'm from California, San Fernando Valley, where right. I had an accent of my own that I think I've shed after about 20-something years. But I love it here. I hit the ground here when I was 18 years old on a trip and thought, oh, thank God, and never want to leave. So the only thing I've that? shed is hair. <laughs> well, there you have it. Uh, James Carver, Lisa Rubin on a fallback on more than one topic. Thanks to both of you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.